Hi, everyone. Welcome to a type of lesson that I personally love, a lesson that is all about making your workflow faster. And Quick Actions is just one of the ways in Vectornator that help you do that. Quick Actions is this mini widget here that appears under an object when selected. It changes based on the type of elements that are selected, as some operations do not apply universally. And it only appears when you select an object or a group of objects with the selection tool. So if we have the node tool, for example, or any other tool for that matter, it's nowhere to be found. The point of this little guy is to avoid going back and forth between your object and the inspector. Quick actions consist of the most used operations from all these four tabs presented to you in a much more accessible way, depending on what type of vector object you're working with. Let's take each case one by one. Let's look at one single closed shape first. This lemon here is not grouped or masked. It's made of these individual shapes that you see here. So with the selection tool at hand, tap on this circle and let's look at the quick actions widget. The operations we have available are stack order, opacity, alignment, stroke width, corner radius, and delete. By tapping delete, no surprise here, our shape is gone. Let's bring it back. Now let's go to opacity. By tapping the opacity button, a slider appears that you can adjust from left to right to achieve the transparency level that you want. Tap again to go back. But quick actions can be even quicker than that. For operations that work with a slider like opacity, you can just tap the button and without raising your pencil, slide right or left to adjust opacity values. The further we are, the more precise we get. The same thing happens with stroke width. Tap, open the slider, drag, and now I can easily add a stroke. Thin, thick, or none at all, whatever I want. All right, let's move on to this shape. Corner radius obviously works with shapes that have corners. A circle does not have corners, duh, but this circle actually started off as a square. If I drag the corner radius towards the left to the max, we see its origins. And if we reverse it, we see that any square with a corner radius of 100% will become a circle. If we have a polygon instead of a rectangle, a brand new option appears that allows me to control the number of sides. So, if I tap and drag on this little icon, I can reduce it from a minimum of three sides to a maximum of 20. Moving on to more complex cases. More complex meaning that we're going to work with multiple shapes at once. Let's start with these three shapes. What happens when I select all? Notice that I have these three extra options here. Let's start with the second. Always keep them guessing. Kidding, it's just a good place to start because it reveals all our Boolean operations. If I tap on Unite, I now have one single vector path that takes the shape of a lemon. Watch our Boolean video if you wanna learn more about these super useful operations. Now, let's say I want to work with all these three shapes, like moving them around, scaling them, and so on, without uniting. What I'd want to do is group them together. Once selected, my group is signaled with the letter G, here in the lower right corner. And what's more, the quick actions button also changed because when tapped, it will ungroup my shapes instead. All right, let's move on to another use case. Once I select this watermelon, we see another letter in the lower right corner, the letter M. This means that this group contains a mask. So then this button here gives me the option to unmask. All my shapes are now separated and in their original form. If we select all our objects again, the button has reversed its function. So now I can actually create the clipping mask just like it was before. In our final example, let's talk text. A whole different case compared with what we had until now. How? Well, let's see. Let's go to our grapes here. Pick up the text tool and write a random word. Great, let's go back to the selection tool. My text appears invisible at the moment, which might mean that my font is so big it goes way beyond its text box, and it's fixable in a few quick ways. Let's go to a classic, resizing, but let's go back and use the quick action shortcut we saw before. Tap and slide to the left or right until your text is the right size. Left means smaller and right bigger. Here we also have alignment which aligns our text in different ways within its text box. 
not to be confused with the alignment of objects in relation to each other or the canvas. Okay, now I've made the text box bigger to show you another way that we could have used to fix the invisible text issue we encountered before. Fit bounds to text size, which snugly fits the text box to the text size, so it's much easier to work with. Lastly, let's look at multiple objects that include text. If I select this stroke together with text, I have the cool option to place text on path, which I can then adjust and rotate as I want. That's all we've got for today. We really encourage you to make use of the Quick Actions widget. Our data says it can make your workflow 30% faster when designing or illustrating. And it's really not just about speed. It's about ease, accessibility, and fully focusing on the creative process. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and tune in for our next Academy episode.